Hi, I'm Barry Money with LeakMaster, and uh, this is a short demonstration video on the startup of a Defender leak test instrument. So you're going to receive a box of this shape, and inside this box is going to be the Defender, which will have some foam packing in there. But for demonstration purposes, this does not. I'm going to pull out the Defender, sit it on a nice padded surface. <coughs> And then there's a second box inside the box that is going to have some additional contents in it. So now that we've got everything removed from the box, the first thing we're going to do is open up our secondary internal box. And this is going to have all of the options that you purchased. So we have a 120 volt power supply in here. Go ahead and remove it. So this converts 24, uh, 120 volts to 24 volts DC. Remove the contents and get this assembled. So this is ready to go. We have our air prep unit. So this is a, a 0.5 micron uh, air filter water separator. Uh, and also a regulator and shutoff valve. So whatever you're going to be supplying to this fitting uh, air tubing wise, you're going to need to supply your own fittings for that. So I've got two fittings here and I'm going to install in here because we've got quarter inch tubing for this de demonstration. So I'm going to put a fitting in both ends of this quarter inch tube to 3 8 MPT threads. So you just have to adapt your own your own fittings for whatever your tubing needs are. So that guy's ready to go. The remainder of the contents, now if you didn't order the 120 volt power adapter, it will come with a M12 turret cable here. So if you're supplying your own 24 volt power supply, you're going to wire this up to your power supply and then plug the uh, M12 Euro connector into the Defender. So it's either this or this for your power options. Last but not least is the manual. So we've got the manual, a bottle of Snoop for finding leaks in our startup process. We have our CPC fitting, which will plug into the bottom of the Defender. Um, we also have a USB stick that's going to have the electronic version of your manual on it. You're going to have your actual operations manual which tells you everything you need to know about wiring, plumbing. And then we also have, if you ordered a calibrated leak with your leak tester, it's going to have the CAL certificate inside this package here. So it's uh, critical to keep this information, this is your pressure calibration report, this is your leak uh, the leak orifice calibration report, it's going to be critical to keep these, uh, especially if you're a machine builder, and supply these to your end user to their quality department so they can enter it into their gauge system. Now it's time to mount the Defender leak test instrument. So I'm going to remove the uh, plastic wrapping contents of it. For this demonstration, I'm going to place it face down on a padded surface so I don't damage my touch screen. Got a little stand here that I'm going to mount it to. I'm going to sit the stand right here. And there are four bolt holes on the back side of the Defender. And they are 1032 threaded inserts inside there. So I'm going to take a 1032 bolt, put it through this hole. Four bolt holes, 1032 thread. Okay, now that we got the, the all the all four bolts tightened and secured, stand up the stand. I'm gonna tip it back a bit so we can uh, look at the underneath side, which 
All of the plumbing uh, pneumatics connections is on the bottom of the leak tester. And all of the electrical interfaces on the side. So your power, your, di your discrete I.O., your uh, Ethernet IP, your machine network, your network connections, USB, all electrical interfaces on the left side of the unit, all pneumatic interfaces on the bottom of the unit. So, as you can see here, we have uh, we supply a T-fitting that tees off the pilot air pressure and the supply pressure for the leak test air. So, uh, this T-fitting can come in handy so long as you don't have an extremely light uh, pressure that you're dealing with. So, if you were dealing with 2 PSI test pressure or less, we may isolate these two out to where we run line pressure or 60 to 80 PSI to the pilot source and then maybe a very low pressure 5 PSI say for the uh, for the air in for the leak test. Now if your leak test is greater than 2 PSI you can probably just tie these two together with the supplied fitting that we uh, provide here. Alright, so now that we've got the, mount, the unit mounted, we're going to plumb air into our air prep unit. So, I've got a quarter inch tubing here, so I'm just going to plug these guys in. A quarter inch tubing coming out the back side of the air prep unit. And I'm going to run it into this fitting here, which is going to supply air up to my pilot pressure. Pilot pressure is the air pressure required to shift the internal pneumatic valves. And then my air in connection, which is the is going to be regulated down by this regulator handle, which will end up setting the set point pressure for the leak test. So once I've got that plumbed in, I'm going to make sure I've got air out to my air prep unit and turn this handle to supply. Now this is all pressurized and I need to set my pressure to a minimum of 60 PSI. You heard that click. That's because the internal valves that the pilot air is uh, driving actually have to see a minimum of 25 PSI before they'll actually shift. So once this pressure climbed above 20 PSI, you heard the, the valve shift. <clears throat> so it's critical have enough air supply pressure. I'm going to set this to 80 PSI. When you're done setting your pressure on your air prep unit, just click it, locks in place. So now we have air supply to the unit. Next step is going to be uh, delivering uh, power to the Defender unit. So I've got our uh, 120 volt power adapter. I am going to plug one of it one end of it which is the uh there's a euro m12 connector that will plug into the side of the leak test instrument right here it says 24 volts dc right there so this is going to be a 24 volt supply i'm going to fasten this all the way down and i'll plug the other end into a 120 volt receptacle so now we've got 24 volts supplied to the unit um, if, if you're in a machine build situation and you have a 24 volt power supply, you may be delivering this power yourself. You just need an M12, uh, Ural style connector. Uh, the other end of it wired up to your 24 volt power supply. Just make sure you have plenty of overhead to where you can supply enough power to, uh, not have voltage spikes if you're, if you're drawing too much load on, uh, your 24 volt system. Okay, so now that we have air uh, air pressure supplied to the unit, and we also have 24 volts DC to power the unit, now it's time to power it up. So we're just going to push our power on button right here. It's going to turn blue, indicating that we do have power, and the boot up process is going to start. The boot up typically takes about 20 to 30 seconds. Now that we've booted up, it's going to boot up to your run screen. And the first thing that we want to do is select Program 11, which is self-test, to this test actually tests the integrity of the internal manifold to make sure that it's leak-free, and it also gives us an opportunity to set our test pressure properly. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as the admin, 
and the default password for admin is admin. If you look in your manual, you can see instructions on how to change those passwords if you, if you prefer. And I'm going to come out to my program screen. I'm still on self-test here, program name self-test. And uh, I'm going to come to set pressure. And I'm going to turn on the air. And this is a vacuum tester, so it's got an internal vacuum generator built into it. But you can see I'm drawing down to 4.1 PSI. If I wanted to adjust that pressure up, I'm going to turn it up just like this. You can see my current pressure is climbing. So for this, is, for this example, I'm just going to test at 8 PSI. When I've got my pressure set where I want, there's a lock nut on the bottom of here. I can uh, tighten this up to where this this can no longer turn. Once I have it set where I want, I hit the air button again to turn it off. So if I wanted to double check it, make sure it's still coming up to negative eight PSI, boom. So now I'm, my pressure is set. I'm still on the self test. I want to test this internal manifold. I just hit start. I can hit start here or I can hit start here. And this will tell me how much my actual internal manifold leaks. And you can see I have 0.00, .00 leak rate. So that means we're leak free, we're good to go. So now that we've tested and ensured that our uh, internal manifold is leak free, uh, we're going to remove the plug. There's one thing I didn't show before. There's a holster for this plug underneath here. It's labeled plug and that it's just a placeholder for this. But this is gonna ship to you in this position right here so that the inter that our manifold is plugged off. That's how we did our self-test. Now that we've performed a self-test and we know that we're leak-free, we're going to remove this plug. And now we're going to take from our uh, original packaging, our CPC fitting will fit in the same female quick connect port right here. Now the end user is responsible for plumbing their own fitting into the end of this, which is a quarter MPT thread. So you're going to thread your own fitting in here, run tubing out to your test part, and put a fitting on that end as well. So I've got an example here of a setup. I've just got a, a little dead volume here. And we've already got the fittings already connected on here. But it's very critical to use a swage lock or equivalent uh, compression style fittings to ensure that everything is leak free. Do not use push to connect fittings. They will leak. There's O-rings down inside there. They leak over time. So it's, we always recommend using compression style fittings. And typically we, uh, we always use stainless steel as well. So I've got this guy set up and this is gonna be our test piece for this demonstration. So I'm gonna plug this into our CPC fitting. Now there's a, there's a, a release button on here. So you have to make sure that this is released and as you watch as I put this fitting in you'll see it clicks and it locks it in so when you pull this fitting out just make sure that it's not in this position and you're trying to put it in like this make sure it's in the open position and then it's fully locked now that we've ran our self test and verified that we are leak free we're ready to connect up to the part so I'm connected up to the part this is going to be our test part. The first thing that we want to do is make sure this is a leak-free product. So I am running self-test right now. Uh, it doesn't really matter what test you're running. We just want to apply pressure to it. So I'm going to hit start and I'm going to hit pause. And I've paused it during the fill step. And you can see I'm applying 4.13 PSI to this product right now. So we've delivered 4.3 PSI to the product. Your application pressure can obviously vary, but for this ex example, we're at 4 PSI. And I'm going to start shooting Snoop, which is, has been provided in your packet as well. I'm going to put Snoop on all the fittings, all the junctions. Make sure there's no leaks. Everything that we just assembled, we want to make sure is leak-free. I'm going to come down here. Everything that could possibly leak and... 
I'm going to show you an example of what an actual leak looks like. And this is what the purpose of the snoop is. The snoop pr produces very good bubbles. You could obviously use Windex or some sort of other solution that's going to produce bubbles, but we supply this because it does a very good job of it. If you find a leak, fix your leak. Once you're leak free, double check it. Snoop will produce a little bit of bubbles on its own, so make sure you pop any bubbles. So this guy's leak free, all my connections are leak free. Now you're ready to start setting up your leak tester for an actual production test.